From the tropics of Guyana to the Caribbean Sea and Barbados, India and South Africa will participate in the final tomorrow. England are in Barbados, but they won't be at Kensington Oval. They were unceremoniously dumped out by a very powerful Indian performance yesterday in Guyana. Two former England captains are alongside me. We both watched on sort of hiding behind the sofa at times yesterday. It was a dominant performance from India. England was swept aside. They were in conditions that very much suited the India team. It was a kind of slow, low holding pitch. They're the kind of conditions that England have looked less good on in this tournament and generally historically, you would say. Um, whereas India, that's, that's them at their absolute best. Their spinners, Axar Patel and Kuldeep uh, in particular. Uh, once England lost three wickets in the power play, it was a bit of a panic thereafter. Um, so not a surprise, perhaps the, the extent of the victory, the margin of the victory, 68 runs, you know, it's a bit of a, a bit of a thumping, as you say, uh, similar to the one that England gave India two years ago in, in Adelaide, but very different conditions, day game, not day night game, slower pitch. Does this mean it's a line in the sand, quite literally, and there's a few players that will now move on? Yeah, I think as, you know, we get further down the line and there is a bit of a, an honest reflection you will have players that are coming towards the end of their uh, careers and even into the, the, the twilight, guys like Chris Jordan, Johnny Bairstow, Moeen Ali and this happens after every Ashes, every World Cup, that's just the natural process that sides go through but I, I mean you sit here and pre-tournament you would have said what's the level of expectation on England's shoulders it would be to reach the semi-final and they did um, there are a lot of positives to take from this in particular, but I, I don't believe it's a case of turning the whole side around. I think they've got a lot of things right in this tournament, but yesterday we're just completely outplayed. They have reached the semi-final, and, and I was asked before the tournament what constitutes yeah. minimum, bare minimum, and I said semi-final. When you look at who England have beaten, yeah. it's only West Indies, really. Absolutely. I don't th feel that it's been... Um, a tournament like the 50 over World Cup in India where England made every wrong call virtually um, and you know you could really point the finger at the management and say why have you done this why have you done that that felt like a, a shocking tournament this doesn't feel like that but as you say the honest reflection is that they've beaten essentially one full member nation West Indies and they've lost to the better teams yeah. they've lost to India they've lost to Australia they've lost to South Africa and Josh Butler hates it when you hark back to the 50 over World Cup in India but that's really part of the whole context and when you look at England's performances over the two World Cups I think they've lost nine and won three against the full member nations and obviously beaten the teams that they would expect to beat so to, to my mind that's just a reflection that this side is not as good as it was and that's partly uh, down to the natural cycle you know teams Age, change, get to the end of their cycle. England have been a very good white ball team for a long period of time. They're not quite as good as they were. This is their level, really. I'd say semi-final is about right, but they're just not quite measuring up to the top teams right now. Joss Butler has said we will review everything. What does that mean? Well, I've certainly been in that position before, and it is, is everything in, uh, from the build into the tournament, the squad that they've selected to each and every decision, whether it is based on conditions or backing up what they said they're going to do. I think upon review, they will reflect and say, you know what, we've put ourselves in a really, really good position. And there are two elements to this World Cup that stand out that are worth taking into consideration. Yes, there's the one... Uh, win against a full member nation which is a little bit disappointing given the expectation on England's shoulders and the quality that they have but the other is how they've handled the outside elements the pressures that uh, mounted due to a rain affected game the extra added pressure of having to deal with net run rate I thought they handled it brilliantly and again going back to the 50 over World Cup when they came up against challenges like that, they didn't reflect that well. So I would say their decision-making process has certainly improved and they will reflect as to why. Uh, there was the inclusion of Andrew Flintoff as a mentor and coach and the backroom staff, Kyron Pollard as well. So whether that support has aided Matthew Mott and Josh Butler's decision-making process, uh, they will get to the bottom of. And if it has, get them around. Keep them around for longer. Get them on a full-time basis, not just for a World Cup. Where does Matthew Mott's future lie, would you say? Well, in the balance, I would say. I, I think uh, Josh Butler's in a much stronger position just because players uh, are less expendable than coaches. You know, you can, you can go and, and get coaches from anywhere. There's not many Josh Butlers around. Um, so I'd say he's in a much stronger position as captain. 
Um, but that said, you know, Matthew Mott's only in, in the halfway through his contract. So two years of a four-year uh, four year deal, I think, and they'll obviously sit and, re and reflect. I think the one thing to say is, you've got, if you do make a change, you've got to be damn sure you're making a change for the better. And that's not always straightforward. You know, the, the, these positions coaching a, a national team now are not quite the plum jobs that they once were. You get a lot of the best candidates who want franchise jobs because it's less uh, impingement on their time, their family time, shorter contracts, that kind of thing. So if they are thinking, you, you, they, they better be damn sure they got a better option. Mm. Um, it's a bit like the Manchester United situation with Eric Ten Hag. You know, you're not quite 100% convinced. You have a look around and then you realise better what we've got and what we know. What about your great mate, Joss Butler? Do you still think he has the appetite to drive the side forward? There might be a bit of cyclic changes with some younger players coming in. Sometimes it looks like the responsibility and the pressure weighs heavily on him. No, I, I think that's just his natural way of, of dealing with each and every decision and the, the pressures. You see it in his own individual performance at times when he gets fired up. That, that should come out in his captaincy because that's who he is. I, th I think he should absolutely continue next year as a uh, Champions Trophy the following year as another World Cup, which will absolutely fly in. You know, he's done incredible work with youngsters coming through, the likes of Harry Brook, Phil Salt have been brilliant in this World Cup, their second only World Cup. So you invest time, energy and experience into players like that and it will bode you well in, down the line. Not interested in the coaching role? No, not interested in the Breaking coaching role. Breaking news, Morgan <laughs> has no interest in the coaching role. England will not take part in tomorrow's final. It will be India against South Africa, the two unbeaten sides. Three o'clock, Sky Sports Cricket.